from around the globe, it's theCUBE. Covering HPE Discover Virtual Experience. Brought to you by HPE. Hi, and welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of HPE Discover 2020, the virtual experience. I'm Stu Miniman, and happy to welcome back to the program one of our CUBE alumni, Partha Narazimhan. He is the Chief Technology Officer of Aruba, which of course Aruba is an HPE company. Partha, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Stu. All right, so HPE Discover is a big event, but you know, for the networking people, of course, Aruba has its own event, Atmosphere, which happened you know, just ahead of Discover. Uh, you gave a keynote there, some news there that we'll, we'll, we'll talk about, but uh, you know, just you know, bring, bring our audience up to speed a little bit about you know, the, the, the role of the networking uh, inside of HPE with Aruba. Right, and so it, you know, while Aruba's primary focus is networking and security, uh, we really have expanded in the past few years the scope of the problem set that we work on to what we call the intelligent edge. And we define the edge as where people are, where action is, and how do you think about the kinds of experiences that uh, end users care about in addition to just connecting securely to their apps and so you know, uh, data on the other side, but also about the experiences in the physical world and then there are these um, stakeholders that care about you know, efficiency, productivity, and so on. So the intelligent edge is, uh, it includes networking and security, but it really focuses on uh, people and, uh, and business stakeholders. Yeah, that, that, that's great. Uh, you know, often we talk, it's, you know, it's the business outcomes that matter and experiences. It's you know, so much about people. Uh, the, the current global pandemic uh, absolutely has put a, a real focus on people. Um, it, you know, from a networking standpoint, of course, everybody's working from home a lot more. Um, you know, VPN uh, services need to be considered. Uh, and, you know, what I'm, I'm curious the impact uh, for, from your business and, and your customers as to, to what's happening. Right, and this is where, you know, the focus on, um, on the intelligent edge, on people's experiences and business outcomes um, is actually, you know, even though we got started earlier, it has been highlighted now with the presence of the pandemic, right? And if you define, go back to the definition of the edge as where people are and where action is, in the last two to three months, a lot of that is just in people's homes, in all of our homes, right? That's where, that's where I am right now, and that's where we all have been. Um, so what does that mean for where the edge is? And so we kind of see at least three phases in here uh, where right now we're focused on business continuity, uh, which is how do you now enable employees to continue to stay productive and connect securely to uh, the, the the enterprise data and apps, but also when you know some of this subsides, how do you bring people back safely, you know, into physical spaces, and that's what we call business recovery. And then as I talk to customers, you know, there's there's a spectrum of uh, opinions about what is going to stick, and you know. It, if you call that the new normal, um, when the pandemic goes out of our, uh, in our lives, it's, it doesn't look like we're all going back to where we were in January or February this year. And so what is the new normal and how, do you, how does the ed prepare for it? And that's, that's really what we're focusing on. Yeah, you know, uh, that's so important right now. Partha, you know, when, when you look at enterprises, uh, rapidly uh, adjusting to, to uh, situations is not necessarily uh, what we think of, uh, of course, in, in the last few months, we've had to move very fast uh, to be able to enable the workforce. Uh, would love to hear what you're hearing, you know, from CIOs that there and customers, and you know, how are you helping them uh, react to things, you know, much faster than they might have pre-COVID. Correct. So uh, a lot of the business continuity, actually, the focus is on IT. Right, because you know, um, how do you deploy technologies or actually leverage the technologies that have already been deployed in order to allow uh, employees to stay productive from their homes? And uh, there's been a spike in demand from uh, for work from home solutions. Believe it or not, Aruba had uh, we had built a solution called the Remote Access Point way back in 2005 or 2006 when there was a different pandemic um, at that time as a business continuity solution, but given the intensity of how this pandemic has affected all of our lives, uh, there was a spike in demand for work from home solutions, not just from a connectivity and security perspective, but also 
every employee's home uh, is very different, right? Based on the speed of your internet connection, how many other people are at home, how many other devices are connecting to the home network and what else is happening are there three Netflix streams running in parallel? And in which case, in that kind of an environment, how do we now provide some visibility for IT to help the employee in getting their work done? So uh, while we built the remote access point as um, a security solution, we ended up realizing that what we really solved for the end user was a better user experience where they just see the same network that they see in the office, they see it at home. But more, again, helping IT uh, get some visibility and maybe troubleshoot some issues employees might have. And so all three of these have been integral components of that solution. And you know, it became even more front and center uh, when the pandemic hit in terms of the spike in demand for that. Yeah, you know, when I think about security has really, you know, in the last five years or so, escalated not only to the C-suite, but up to the board level uh, for constant consideration. Uh, has has the current uh, situation uh, really raised the visibility of networking, uh, you know, to the C-suite? It has, right? Essentially, um, you know, the focus until now could have uh, could have been that okay, I'm, I'm, I all of my employees get into the office, and how do I now create an environment within the uh, office building that allows for collaboration, that allows for seamless connectivity and, and security? Um, but the pace at which we all had to go to this work from home uh, situation was the, the time window was so short that IT had to respond quickly. Um, and they had to respond quickly where, you know, they could have dealt with a few dozen office buildings to now uh, you know, thousands of employees' homes. And so the, 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 all of the effort that we had put in to create that solution earlier now paid off because, you know, we were ready for this for for this situation, even though you know we all live in interesting times, and I never want to see this again in my lifetime. But the fact that you know we had a focus on it for the last fifteen years or so um, made it ready for us. But more importantly, as we look at you know as the business continuity phase was about IT, the business recovery, which is you know which is probably where we are starting to enter right now, of how do we now bring people back safely into uh, into physical spaces. Um, now the stakeholders are, you know, that set is expanding, right? Whether it's, um, you know, at HPE, we have this team called the crisis management team that is looking at, okay, how do I now manage not just the crisis, but bringing people back in. Facilities important because if things, space has to uh, get rearranged in order to meet certain density or spacing objectives. So they, you know, they have some interest in their uh, marketing, if you're retail or you know uh, you know hospitality and so on, um, they they get interested in it. So there's a lot of other stakeholders now rely on the infrastructure that IT has deployed primarily for connectivity and security. Now that same infrastructure is going to go benefit other stakeholders so that you get competitive advantage in the business recovery phase. Right? If I'm able to safely bring a lot of my key employees that are required to be in physical spaces back in while addressing all of their concerns about the health and the safety associated with the recovery, um, that definitely gives me a competitive advantage. And I, I, we believe that the solutions that Aruba has provided to IT until now uh, are now, there's a, there's a spotlight shining on it because a lot of people, a lot of other stakeholders could benefit from that infrastructure that has already been. Yeah, there's a lot of conversation going on in the industry about what things look like post pandemic. And you know, while there is still obviously a lot of uncertainties, we, we really think there will be some, some hybrid modes going on. So you know, work from home might not stay permanent, but many companies are talking about being more flexible. So how does that impact you know, what you're offering? Because you know, I, I think about uh, you know, from the enterprise, uh, you know, I needed a certain density. Now I need to think about, okay, how do I make sure that whether you're in the office or you know working remotely, that I can have you participate and have the same kind of experience wherever you are. Right, and you know this is again this is where uh, we rely on the network infrastructure, right? Because if you create a, a connectivity network that enables mobility is uh, is secure and is always available, it drives participation. And that participation 
leverages network data to provide visibility into, into physical spaces, right? And think about even the recovery phase, and we see actually three, at least three interesting scenarios in our conversations with customers on how the network can help them um, in the recovery phase, and it points to distancing requirements or, you know, how do I reduce density so that I get some level of increased distancing amongst my employees? So that way you can look at network data and figure out, okay, where the hotspots are in terms of people density and can I go make changes to those to try and lower that, to meet my internal guidelines or public safety guidelines. Two, shared spaces are also a medium of transmission, um, you know, of, of, of this particular virus or disease. And so shared spaces like conference rooms, uh, cafeteria tables and others that uh, we can again use the network to figure out usage of those and potentially provide guidelines to cleaning crews to pay more attention to certain spaces in favor of others that are not necessarily seeing the same level of usage. And three, if in the unfortunate situation that some individual becomes a person of interest, we can quickly figure out all of the spaces that they have been in in the past uh, certain time window, including who else they could have overlapped or been close to within that space, right? So at least you're not relying purely on human memory for contact tracing. There's a certain level of additional data that can be used to enhance or refresh human memory. That is really what we see happening in the business recovery. But you made a good point on what is the new normal, because as we, again, uh, talk to customers, um, trying to gauge what is going to stick beyond the, um, you know, beyond the recovery phase, right? And if you fast forward, let's say a year from now, we have a vaccine and the virus is under control, are we all going to go back to where we were before the virus entered our lives? And, and, the, and the common opinion seems to be that some things are here to stay. And you look at work from home, you made a reference to that. Um, you know, a lot of our customers do believe that there is going to be an increased amount of work from home that stays with us. Um, even even after the virus is out of, out of our lives, that again refreshes all the things that we built for the business continuity continues forward. Even as you know, some you know we start to get back into physical spaces. Security again is paramount, right? The home essentially, as far as IT is concerned, is an uncontrolled environment because they just don't have control over many things that happen in employees' homes. And so, how do we bring in a layer of visibility? and some degree of control in an environment that is inherently uh, not subject to that level of control, the same way that, a, that an office building can be. And those are the kinds of things that we're looking at. When we talk to higher education customers, for example, um, they are looking at plans for the, you know, this upcoming fall semester or for the next academic year of uh, running their classrooms at 30% occupancy. So if you have, 100 students sign up for a class, physically in the classroom, they only want to have 30 students. And the other 70 could be on campus, but they're all dialed in remotely or online into the class. But how do you manage this process? So which 30 people get to be in the classroom for any particular day? And we believe that a lot of these work, the workflows and interesting use cases that directly address the intelligent edge are going to become important as we get into the new all right, and I'm glad you talked about the intelligent edge. So your keynote that you gave at Atmosphere was accelerating innovation at the edge, and uh, you had the tough task of being right before the SpaceX speaker too. So give us a little, our audience a little bit about you know the innovation. How should we be thinking about the edge? So at Atmosphere Digital, uh, you know, two weeks ago, uh, Aruba announced the uh, Edge Services Platform, or ESP for short. And it's a little bit of a play because we really believe that we're building solutions uh, that have a sixth sense in, in sensing what end users are looking for, what stakeholders are looking for, when problems show up, and how do we quickly resolve them, right? So that degree of focus on um, you know, data-driven AI op operations was a key in us starting to coin the term ESP or edge services platform, right? So it really looks at addressing not just connectivity, connect and protect, but also analyze and act. Because the telemetry data coming out of the network is really the same data that, is, uh, that helps with the business recovery. 
but we want to actually bubble that up and put it into a common data lake that helps us deliver a better connection and connectivity and security service, but also enable all of these experiences and outcomes at the edge. And so the ESP or the edge services platform was the key announcement at Atmosphere uh, this year. And we see that as the, uh, the foundation on which everything that we're going to do uh, starting now is going to get built up. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, you know, we, we talked about uh, some of the, the things that have been accelerated uh, due to the current situation. I have to, have to respond, uh, work from home and the, and the, and the like. Um, when you look at edge environments, is that something that, you know, is that something you see people, you know, ex accelerating them? Are they pausing them? Is it just kind of happening at, at the same pace? Any data or sense that you have uh, from users right now? So edge is going to become even more important, right? And we used to focus on uh, the edge. We've had the focus on edge for a while, but until now, until the pandemic hit us, the assumption was always that um, people are going to show up in physical spaces and then let's focus on the experiences and the outcomes. I believe with the pandemic coming in, some of the power of choice has shifted towards the, uh, towards the user or the, or the person in choosing whether they want to consume a particular service or experience by going to a physical space or by staying at home and doing it uh, online, right? You know, I look at the past few weeks, we've had a few birthday parties where, you know, we used to meet in person and now we're all doing it over Zoom or other uh, video conferencing technologies. So that choice moving over to uh, the person means that we can't just assume that people are going to show up in physical spaces and then focus only on, okay, once they show up, what can I do about the experience or the outcomes? The focus on edge is now shifting to where we have to even, we have to even look at enabling uh, te technologies and experiences that entice people, that convince people to come into that physical space and consume that service um, and, and, or experience. And that means that, okay, the scope of what we do at the intelligent edge actually is going to uh, increase, it's going to widen. And that's the reason why it was timely that we were working on um, the edge services platform. Even, you know, we had started working on it long before the pandemic ever showed up in our, in our radar. But that focus is now putting us in the right place, um, you know, from a competitive perspective to leverage all of the technologies that we built so far, to package it up together, to offer our customers something that is far beyond just connectivity and security. Great, now, final question I have for you, you're talking about these, uh, you know, not necessarily in-person experiences. Here we have, you know, the Discover virtual experience. Give our audience uh, just a little bit as to what they expect from Aruba and what you want people to take away from the discover virtual experience when it comes to Aruba and networking at HPE. Right, and you know, uh, the common, uh, we, we, we kind of, when we, when we talk to some customers, there's always an association of uh, the Aruba brand to a, to a wireless LAN. And you know, over time in the past five years as being part of Hewlett Packard Enterprise, we've kind of expanded that to include all of networking and some, some of the security functions that we offer. Uh, but more importantly, I'd encourage everybody to go um, look at some of the technologies that we package together as part of the edge services platform uh, and how they can help our customers, uh, not just IT, but also all of the other stakeholders within their organizations uh, to, to create that compelling experiences and outcomes at the, at the edge. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate all the updates. Thanks, thanks for having me, Stu. All right, stay tuned for more coverage. Uh, HPE Discover Virtual Experience. I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you for watching theCUBE.